Hi everyone, it's Bobby from Did Coding here, and this is a tutorial that's going to walk you through an app that I've built that looks at j uh, dropzone.js. Now I have done another tutorial on this, link to it is just up there, but all that did was allow you to drag images into a drop zone and they upload into a user profile. I've had a couple of comments on that video asking to go one step further and show how we can process multiple forms with one click. Um, because um, the, the drop zone uses its own JS, so if you're looking to capture more information, i.e. if you had a drop zone within another form, we want to know how we can process both forms at the same time. So that's what this app is doing. So let's look at my screen. Okay, I've got it on GitHub, the link to which is in the description below. And if you go on GitHub, this is on my browser, you can see it's got a readme file. So in Sublime Text, which is my text editor, I've got it open here. So you haven't got to do too much. Um, it it's, like, works off a similar premise to all the other apps that I've been building. Uh, you need to create a, a virtual environment on your machine. You need to create a directory, clone this app into that directory, and then you need to change some settings. So this is using an email provider, Gmail, to send emails to new users and to verify emails and things like that. So you'll need to get an app password. Got a video about that up here. So uh, get that set up. You can use Microsoft, you can use other email providers, but we use Gmail. And you'll also need a, G a Google Places API. I've got a link to a video about that up there also. So get those, get them in the settings, make migrations, migrate. Bob's your uncle, you're good to go. So let's crack on with that. I've got a um, command prompt open here. It's already in the right directory and it's already, I've already fired up the virtual environment, so I'm a few steps ahead anyway. So what we wanna do first is make migrations. So python manage.py make migrations. Let's make this a, no we won't bother. Right, so um, yeah, user profile, user image. In this one we've got an image comment. It's just a, a workaround to make sure that I can save some data to a database and then use that data for the uh, image comments. But we'll go through that in a second. So python manage.py migrate. That doesn't work. Because I didn't type manage correctly. So we've now made migrations, we're now migrated. What we will need is a super user so that we can look in the database for when we add images and comments just so we make sure it's all working. So, pipe, this isn't in the readme file, but just do it anyway. <laughs> Manage.py create super user. Keep as Bobby, you can do whatever you want. Add a password. We're using the out of the box Django admin page, so we're not using a six digit one time password or anything like that. So we've made migrations, we've migrated, we've created a super user. Now let's fire up a server. So Python, oh, manage.py run server. Lovely jubbly. So you can go to 127.0.0.1 or you can go to localhost, it doesn't matter. You can go to one or, or, one or both. So let's go incognito, so sh sh control shift N on a Windows machine. And we want to go localhost. There we have it, it's worked. So this is the app, Django drop zone demo. Um, what we need to do, we can't, don't sign in because we haven't got an account yet. Actually, we've got a super user account, we could use that. Yeah, let's just use that. So Bobby, uh, no, it won't like it because this is set up for emails. Should have thought that through. Let's sign up. So. Bobby Stearman, Bobby at didcoding.com. If you click this little show passwords, then it will change it from a password field to a text field so you can see what you've written, but we won't do that because that is my password. Let's sign in, or sorry, sign up. You are now logged in. It will now redirect us to an account page. On the left here, we've got a profile, we've got add images, we've got gallery, we've got sign out. So if we go to profile, uh, begin typing an address. So this is the Google API key. It's not necessary for this app, but it's kind of a hangover from a previous app. So let's just do it anyway. So let's go with 16, hi, there we go, Holborn. And you click it, it pre-populates and you update. Oh, telephone number. That would do, that's no biggie. Your profile has been updated, there we go, that all works. 
Uh, we won't verify the email, it's over and above this um, tutorial. But if you look here, we've got add images. Now in the previous tutorial, we didn't have this field here called upload comments. We've now got that because this is two separate forms. We've got a drop zone form and we've got an upload comment form, I, I believe I've called it. I'll look in the, um, the forms.py file in a second. But what we'll do, we will click on the drop zone, drag in a picture of my mug when I didn't have a beard and we'll put test comment add images your profile was updated okay if we go to gallery we've got the image there now I haven't done anything fancy in the app itself all I wanted to do was capture or, or submit dual forms um, with that data you can do anything with that data but it is in the database so let's log into admin should be in the database we go Bobby oh. and my password okay so we should have the user image which will be here and if we go to image comments because we have registered it in admin we've then got the bobby decode and we've got the test comment here but if you look on the images click in that image you'll see that it's then pulled through the um, uploaded description so that is the app nothing too fancy nothing too heavyweight but it does the trick so we're not just submitting one form we're submitting two forms. We're submitting a Django model form on, uh, and it's using Ajax to submit that, so it's asynchronous. When we get the success function back, it, was, it responds with a JSON file. On success, it then triggers the drop zone JS form. So let's jump into the code. This is my sublime text. So there we go. Okay, what have we got? So if we look into users, the only thing that's changed from the other app is that in forms at the bottom here, I have now added an image comment form and it's drawing in from image comment, which is a model that we've also built. So it's got a field in the model called uh, upload description and we're just pulling through the field. So it's, it's a built in model form from Django, no different to the other form. So nothing fancy. We look in models.py at the bottom, just above user image. I've then got this one here which is image comment. It's just got a timestamp, it's got a user, foreign key, and it's also got an upload description. Max length, one, sorry, max length 100. But that's it, that's all we've done. And um, so we're now shooting a form, a model form through to our views. So let's look in views. Image comment form, and we're putting that through to our uh, URL images. So I am jumping through quite a lot of this code because I've gone through it in great depth in the previous tutorial. Again, the link to it is up there. So if you want a real deep dive in this code, go there. All I'm doing in this tutorial is just looking at what I've added to process two forms. That's all I'm doing. Account, let's minimize all of these. Happy days. Right, we've got images here. So it, you have to be logged. It's got the decorator login required. You must be an authenticator, logged in user, sorry, an authenticated logged in user to view this page, which we are. We instantiate the form so we can actually see a form on the front end. Uh, we come up with, we add the results and the messages, which is the same as the other um, views. If request, so if it's an Ajax call and the request method is post, then we do something. And in this case, we add the instance of request user because it has got a foreign key of user in the model. And the data is the, is the post data that comes in from the request itself. If the form is valid, and we save the form, we get the clean data, and then we save the image content, uh, sorry, image comment. So we create an object, okay? And then we send, so, uh, in the context, we send that back using JSON dumps to the Ajax call, which is in a JS. So we open static, main JS, I've added another function to the Ajax calls. So it's now called image comment. So it pulls from the comment form, which is if we open up templates and open up images, the form now I've added is all this bit here. So it's comment form, method post, action is images. Okay, so we go back to this. Getting the form, so we're sterilizing the form data and then it's doing an Ajax call. So it's calling action, that is images, method is post, and the data is the form data. Form data is uh, this here, so it's sterilized from the form comment form. 
and we make an Ajax call to images and when it gets back in the success, so if, if the Ajax call is a success, it gets a JSON response. So it posts a comment, sorry, an alert saying whether or not, you know, the issue, it could be an issue, it could be an error, it could be a success. So it posts that message and then on, after that has been completed, the images, sorry, the comment has been shown, it then works with a button with an ID of image button. So let's keep this open. So I just make a slight change and go back into images HTML. So I've made a change to the form, the drop zone form. Okay, so we've still got the CSRF token, fine. But the button that was in the previous tutorial is now hidden, so you can't see it. And also it's disabled, so you can't do anything with it. So a user can't do anything with it. But we've got the idea of image button. So to process this form, what we're doing is we're making an Ajax call to process a comment, we save the comment in a database, and when that is a successful Ajax call, we remove an attribute called disabled, so that button is no longer disabled, and then we click the button. So we're mimicking that process of a user clicking a submit button, but we're doing it programmatically. So that's how you process two forms in one call using DropZone.js. Before I finish up though, we'll look at the drop zone JS quickly. Um, auto process queue, false, we'll keep that exactly the same. We don't need to do anything different on that. In fact, we haven't changed the JS for drop zone at all because the submit button is still the same. The only difference being when you're processing just the drop zone, you click the submit button for that form. In this example, we're clicking the submit button for another form and only activating this submit button when the Ajax call is a success. That is it. I hope this tutorial has been a benefit to you. Please subscribe to my channel. Please like the video. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Thank you.